Oh, thank you. I feel like I've just, I was just here on Monday. A yeah. few days. <laughs> Goes fast. It really does. But you're here to spread your health knowledge with uh, our lovely listeners and yeah. to keep us a bit more balanced, basically, and in touch with our physical beings. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> part of that, obviously, is what we what we take into our bodies. And I hope today you're all feeling thirsty because we're going to talk about hydration. Um, something that, you know, living in this heat, I know it's getting cooler, but it's still hot, uh, living in this heat. People always ask me, you know, how much is enough? How much water should I be drinking? So we're going to establish that today and give you uh, some information on that. This is one of the topics that everyone's a little bit guilty of. Yeah, I think so. You know, I'm going to say this, you know, living in the UK, I guess you're going to agree with me here. We don't drink a lot, you know, a lot of water because you're not actually that hot. We sort mm. of associate it with being warm. Like, yeah. I'm really hot, so I'll have some water. Um, but when I when I moved here three years ago, I became quite paranoid. I thought I have to drink so much water. Um, I'm going to feel ill if I don't. And, you know, you do have to be careful. There is such a thing as drinking too much. Mm. So it's finding that balance. You know, here in the Gulf, well, actually in Britain, the recommended allowance is 2.5 litres of water. Which that is sounds, not a lot. Well, it kind of sounds a lot. Or Do you think it does? I don't know. Because if you think, obviously, the water bottles, let's put this into like a physical yeah, form. Yeah. When you have, say, a large water bottle. Yeah, like the, a litre. I guess, I mean... <gasps> I, I look at it like when I'm telling clients, because um, we're going to get to that, you know, drinking a lot of water can also help with weight loss. So when people are maybe struggling a little bit, I do ask them, you know, how much they're drinking. And when I get two bottles as a result for 500 mils mm. that's not a lot that's only one liter i've drank 500 mils before i even came here today laura because mm. i set myself a goal every day that's become a habit to me and believe it or not when you start to drink a lot of water it actually becomes easier to drink it and so on it becomes quite a nice cycle and um, what happens to our bodies is it, our body starts to crave it, it, it recognizes dehydration is coming so it starts Mm. to crave the water so i find i'll go for you know a bottle of water whereas when you don't really drink it that often it can feel like a chore so it's trying to manage how you're going to fit this amount into your day so you think that's quite a lot then 2.5 i know i think off the cuff i kind of imagine glugging down to 2.5 liters of water but i guess you spread it out throughout the day yeah um, if you broke that down into say 500 mil yeah. bottles That's and then I you do. just placed it throughout the yeah. day actually yeah it's, it's you much know, more manageable that is it, it's totally you know if you stagger these throughout the day um, it's going to be a lot easier plus it's better for you it's not good for you to down a lot of water quickly your kidneys mm. would, would kind of find that difficult to process so you're looking to I mean for me I try to get like three liters and I see that as six 500 mils mm. six of those that's two in the morning two in the afternoon and two in the evening that's nothing you know and you can you know you might also be pleased to hear that it's not just like water like plain water you can count well there there was a while where we thought tea and coffee was actually a diuretic meaning Mm. it would dehydrate you but now they're saying that you can actually include this in your intake so Ah. like i said in this show before i drink a lot of tea Mm. i think us british do (laughs) so i i probably take in a lot more than my three liters by drinking lots of tea so you know that's that's another way to try and get that intake in do you have any other preferred choices do you know the thing is i'm i've considered myself quite lucky because i like water mm-hmm. i'll reach for it quite yeah. happily some people do find it very difficult to drink and i was going to ask whether things like obviously there have got to be some additional kind of products perhaps like squash or cordial yes, yes. um things like that are going to kind of alleviate some of the pain of drinking water if you find it difficult but i guess it really depends on what you're adding to that water because if it's um tang yeah. or something like that i know like i know of sugar and i stuff. mean this is something that you know we do need to be careful of like water you know some people they think it's quite boring so what i actually do is i keep a, a quite a big jug in the fridge and i chop up lemon or orange slices and put mm. it in there so it's a natural um way of getting a some vitamins flavor. yeah mm. a bit more flavor and i also do like you know like a robinson's sort of squash I opt for the no added sugar one because a lot of these drinks do have a lot of sugar in them yeah. and calories and like carbohydrate and things. You know, if you're if you're trying to watch your carbohydrate intake, you're actually taking that in liquid form if you're if you're drinking a lot of these squashes. So you should try to limit them to like one or two a day mm. and really just focus more on on the water. But I do think, you know, living in a place that's quite hot, we, we could try and take advantage of that. Like I do feel 
the need to reach for water more than I do, you know, back in the UK. Yeah. So I think, you know, you've got to try and fit these in throughout the day. And let me explain, you know, why it's important for us mm. to drink water. We all know that it's, you know, we have to drink water. Our bodies are made up of it. But there are reasons for it. I mean, we need water to function properly. So it's really important for our brain to work at its optimum. That's why sometimes if you're not feeling spot on, you're not concentrating or you've got like a headache, you know, have you actually drank enough water? Yeah. See it as a way of replacing your body. Your body is constantly processing food, digestion, liquids are going through your kidneys to detoxify your body. So you need to replace it. Um, one way to, to know if you're dehydrated or not is to go to the bathroom and you can yeah. check the colour of uh, of what is there. Um, shouldn't look like apple juice. So yeah. <laughs> it should be a nice sort of pale colour. So if you are quite dehydrated, you will see. I really you know. hope no one's drinking apple juice at their yeah. breakfast right yeah. now. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or iced tea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to get into the graphics of it all. But a lot of but bathrooms here are actually quite good. Uh, within QF, they have charts. Oh, they on, do? on the back of doors I've quite never often. That here. They do, yeah. Within QF, they'll have a chart and it'll say, This is good, this colour is bad. I will so. go and check that out straight away after mm. this. I didn't know that. But yeah, that's a really good thing. I mean, it's your body, it's telling you signs. Mm. And by the time you feel thirsty, you're dehydrated. Mm. And by the time you feel that headache, oh, again, you're probably severely dehydrated. So really try and just top it up throughout the day. So to get back to why water is important. Um, like I said, it helps your brain work at its optimum. And, you know, if you drink enough water, you can sometimes feel more energized because your system is flowing as it should be. It's flowing nicely. So if you're feeling like you've had lunch and in the afternoon you just feel kind of white, and... you know, give yourself some water. Just perk yourself up a little bit. It will help you to improve that concentration. And something that's very, very important if you're trying to watch your weight is um, water can make you feel full. So I'm sure we're all guilty of feeling I'm hungry and it, and it could be boredom, but often or not, you actually are dehydrated. So you want to try and reach for foods that are also quite rich in water. So like watermelon, cucumber has a lot of water content. You know, some of these kind of type of foods. Yummy. <laughs> yeah, you know, a big watermelon, nice and refreshing. But if you um, were to drink more water, of course you feel full. You won't feel as hungry. And as we spoke about last week on the metabolism show, that if you actually, it's been proven that, you know, if you drink freezing cold water throughout the day, you can burn more calories. So it's worth a try. And that's the other thing. There's just nothing in it. Well, other than no, good things. No, it's really. nature's absolute goodness for you. Mm. And that's when, you know, myself, I always try to follow like quite an organic, clean kind of diet. So for me, I feel if I'm drinking water, it's just pure. It's just the best thing for you. And as we all know, it also helps with our skin. Yeah. It helps because of that detoxifying issue. It helps make your skin glow and it can even make your hair really nice and bouncy so it's really uh good for you for you know all these different nutrients um and again that weight loss issue if you're somebody that suffers from ibs um or some sort of bowel issues um being hydrated is quite important to flush everything through you so you need to to really be on top of that drinking drinking water um people have asked me before about water retention and it's quite a strange issue Mm. i say like you know It sounds crazy, but you have to drink more water to flush it out of your system. Okay. So sometimes when we've been on aeroplanes, have you ever had that? Where you've been puffed up? You get the puffy, puffy ankles and things like that. Yeah. 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 And that comes from, it can be from your circulation, but it predominantly comes from your body retaining water. So when we're, you know, traveling on an aeroplane, we become quite dehydrated quicker because Mm. the air is thinner up there. Um, So when I'm on an aeroplane, not only do I move about a lot, Um, We're going to discuss that in another show, actually, you know, when you're traveling, how to keep on top of um, health and exercise. But when I want to eat a plane, I drink a lot of water. Gets you going to the bathroom, that gets you exercising. It's important to move, especially on long flights. So if you don't drink a lot on an airplane, you do retain the water. You retain the sodium, which is salt in your body. So you puff up. And it's not a nice feeling, to be honest, if you've ever had that. I think also, I always feel a bit imbalanced after a long... I mean, I did a 16-hour from Doha to Melbourne. And, you know, 
you just feel completely imbalanced in all yeah. ways. Like you get chapped yeah. lips, which yes, again, the yes. dehydration, and that's the dehydration. quality. The yeah, all of it kind of teams up together. But I can understand that. I'm always dehydrated after a flight. Yeah, and that's a good point, Laura. That you know, living in this country, okay, we've got the heat, so you you would naturally as- associate, oh, I've got to drink cold water, and um, because I'll be dehydrated by the heat. But also, air conditioning dehydrates us. So if you're sleeping with that on, I mean, I'm really bad at the moment for my lips being really dry. Yeah, so to go back to, you know, talking about water retention, um, if you're trying to lose weight, that's why I'm saying, look, drink water, it flushes everything out of your system. You can go on a scale and actually you can show that if you've got one of these um, muscle percentage scales, I have one that I use for my clients and it tells you how much water you're storing. So if you, it's maybe not that number on the scales, maybe not the fat that mm. it's you're holding too much water. So it is important to flush that out. Um, something to bear in mind though is there is a case of um, hyponatremia, which is drinking too much water. This is quite rare in the average person. Yeah. Um, it's mostly in like elite runners, people who really have, you know, stripped all their water away, sweated yeah. it out, all their electrolytes, everything's gone from their system and they've drank too much water in a short amount of time, like four litres in a short amount of time. Yeah. And what happens with that is your sodium levels become diluted, which is dangerous uh, for your blood levels. So it's it's quite unlikely anybody is going to be doing that. But just to bear it in mind, it's best to stagger these throughout the day and not think, all right, I've got to do three litres yeah. now yeah, yeah. before bedtime. And you can't even do it. Your body kind of stops you from doing it, you yeah. find. You've well, never like had it where you feel like, I need to down a glass of water. Sometimes I've even had that just with, like, say, a pint of water. Just trying to drown, down it, my body's almost going, no, 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 I don't want it. Absolutely. I don't want it. You Absolutely. Know? That's, and that's why I always am going on about how amazing our bodies are, that they're, they're t- sending you signals. Yeah. If you're feeling full, yeah. you know, waterlogged, <laughs> yeah. that's enough. Don't take any more. Well, I've got my bottle here. Good. As always, for on air, so I'm just taking a little swig. Yes, we should all, everyone right now, go and take a little drink of water and uh, make yourself feel a bit more hydrated. Well, thank you very much. And coming up next week, we're going to be moving on from hydration. Um, mm-hmm. What topic are we going to be looking at? Well, actually, we're starting next week, we've got a special uh, a special series on sleep. We Everyone all do love it. sleep. Exactly. Or hates it, depending on how little you get. Depends. Well, this is what's interesting because, again, this is, you know, something that I get asked a lot about is sleep. And so we're going to do a special three-parter on sleep, mm-hmm. discussing kind of every aspect of it. So definitely tune in for that. It's going to be really interesting. Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to that. And uh, thank you so much again for coming in. Thank you so much for having me.